You're listening to the Black Eagles podcast. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 131 of Besiktas International's The Black Eagles Podcast. I am your host, Sinan Schwarting, coming live from a wet and dreary, almost fall New York City. Um, I guess I should say autumn, maybe. Uh, but uh, alongside me, back again uh, after a brief for the depression hiatus <laughs> is everyone's favorite co-host, uh, John, <laughs> who's been gone for a while. Um, may have lost his title. Uh, but with me is the Akmar himself, Evron Akmar. How you doing, man? You know, I'm doing okay. I've definitely been better. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like... Uh, if, if last week was bad, <laughs> this is this may be an even harder one to come back up from. But here we are, nonetheless. Uh, and so, apologies for the delay. Um, sort of technical difficulties, scheduling-wise, and um, I mean, I also did just drop the last episode um, uh, not many days ago. So you know, like a little little break between them isn't isn't ever so bad. I think. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about. We have a lot to talk about now, and some benefits of the delay are obviously that we're going to get some advanced stats from our guy, the Akman, and we also have some other fun news. But I don't want to spoil that because that's like really like up to the minute. So, and if I get on it and release this thing, we could actually be breaking news to our listeners. Um, but so, Evron, let's talk about this match, and we're going to do it. Really quickly, if we can, um, it, it was a bit of a, a bit of a dreary one, I think we can say. And so let's just cut the, the whole um, kind of match facts aspect as much as we can and just sort of really briefly go through it. First, though, I think the one valuable thing we do is talk about the lineup. Um, so who did we send out against Konya Spor? Uh, and I, sh- I should mention in Konya as a sort of... Uh, Side note, because that's always, of course, without fans, it's it's another thing entirely. But typically speaking, you know that that's that's always a hard away game. You know, uh, in Konya, they have a pretty decent fan base and all that. Yeah, uh, so it was a slightly different team than the midweek game against Real Av. Uh, but it was Erson in goal, uh, same usual back four in Sakla, Wellington, Vida, and Nedjip. Uh, the midfield. You know, like trio in the middle, slight change. Dodo Kanmensa and Lyich started together. I think for the first time on the wings we had Boyd and Atakan, and getting his first league start or first league minutes in general was Ben Yeltsin. So, um, although he did start against yeah. Leo Ava, uh, and, and I think his goal against Leo Ava is why he got the start, and I think he was sort of being rewarded for that. Although I mentioned it in my solo cast uh, that I really didn't think he played particularly well against Leo Ava. You know, the goal was really like 100% Nejip, which is like, you know, two weeks, two matches in a row where he, he somehow also Boyd. created. Also Boyd. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. Um, that's right. Boyd absolutely set up Nejip for the assist, right? So that was that was really well done, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's talk about this. I mean, quickly, what happened in the match? And just run run through the highlights, if you can, Evron. Uh, like, it, got, yeah. it, went, it went south real fast, didn't it? Yeah, so I mean, Bishlash had possession from the start. Um, didn't really do anything with it. It was a lot of side to side, side to side amongst the back line. 
Um, and then, you know, that type of dilly dallying gave away a corner in the 27th minute. Dora Khan tried to play a short pass back to Vita after receiving a short pass from, I think it was Nejib. And then Vita, like, the, the pass is under hits. Vita tries, like, slide tackle to the ball and just at the half line just smashes the ball all the way out of bounds for a corner kick. Um, and, uh, you know... It's actually, I think, very important to note what you just noted, uh, which was the Nejip pass. And that, like, as bad as I think people are putting a lot on Vita generally, that was a constant source of his errors, was kind of having to recover. He, he did a poor job of it. But having to recover for errors that Nejip was creating with his yeah, I think for this specific goal, passing. I think Dorukam was the one who paid the short pass to Vita, and I think I believe I'm not I don't remember exactly, but I think Nejip gave the ball to Dorukam that he kind of like poked. Uh, you know, just a lot, a lot of useless possession, and uh, Konya finally got us on it, got a corner kick out of nothing, and uh, we had five players, you know, trotting back casually. Erson wasn't in the goal because he was, you know. Ch chasing down Vita's errant kick, trying back, and then um, you know the they were ready. Uh, Konya Omar Ali Shahin kind of runs to the, take the corner kick quickly, and there's only two Konya players, even in the attacking third, only one in the box when the, the kick is taken, and uh, Shenegliya makes the run, the late run into Shengelia, the box. Shengelia, Shengelia, sorry, <laughs> you got to get his name right because yeah, he, he he earned our respect, I guess, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, just kind of leaps in between four Bishkash players, unchallenged, and it was a perfect header to the side netting. Um, you know, corner taking quickly action, really just kind of embarrassing, especially because our entire back line was like 30 years old. Um, it's not like we had... Who's veteran savvy would you yeah. put that down on more? Uh, Umer Ali Shahiner or the Shengelia fellow? Although he's I, only I mean, 24. It, I think that was, it was a little bit of both. Um, you know, there was the three Konya players were all more awake than our five defenders. Um, this Levon Shengeli guy is only 24. He's Georgian. I, yeah. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Maybe we should get him. Um, so, yeah, that was a terrible start. And, I mean, I, I must admit that I saw a lot of irony in how we got kind of screwed over by... Um, taking that free kick against Leo Ava when, when uh, before the whistle was blown, supposedly, remember? And so we didn't get the penalty and instead got, like, two cards out of it. Uh, and that, that like, literally the next match to get screwed over by a play where questionably you could wonder, like, I don't know if I heard the ref signal. No, for a corner kick, you corner. never have to wait for ah, the whistle. there you go. See, that's an important... So that's, yeah, so... <laughs> I get to expose my ignorance so that we can... Teach to the listeners of that. Um, For free kick, it depends. It depends. So. See, yeah, I thought that, like, I know that the, the, the it depends thing is sort of pivotal. So I don't know how that's applied. Yeah, for a free I, kick, I it's if funny. you ask for a space, um, then you have to wait for the referee's whistle. Uh, that's the, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. how it officially works. And usually the referee will put up, like, you know, will show the whistle when the, before he marks out the, the 10 yards. Did our guys definitively like ask for space? I mean, I, I guess when you have a kick it, where there's they, space, I didn't really like see that. the uh, the in-depth look at it. I just all of a sudden like because they were they were showing replays when all of that went down, and then all of a sudden they yeah, it was a, back it was a up. maelstrom. Yeah, it was a wild scene there. Um, yeah, but anyway, that happened. Yeah, they passed. scored. Yeah, terrible way to 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 allow one there. But anyway. And uh, yeah, that was let's go briskly here. What else? That happened? was basically the half. Uh, we got they got two yellow cards, and uh, Nedjev got a yellow card. The one thing I will notice is Soko Chikaleshi, who started up top for them, got a pretty I would say a little bit of a soft yellow card for a foul on Vita. Yeah, the should have absolutely been. A and then like time. seven minutes later, just like just that, like killed him, like <laughs> yeah. like the same way, but actually like raked his studs um on vita again Which i thought was red worthy alone and it, like and he didn't yeah. get anything the the first one i, I thought was like he like kind of like stepped on like the outside of his toe yeah, like, all right maybe strong. it wasn't much on it but then literally the second one he just like another late tackle but he clearly caught him with his studs and dink somehow gets sent off um yeah that maybe was, it was a makeup that was a call. highway robbery highway yeah. robbery he was because it really like even if it was a makeup crazy. call because like oh you don't want to give him the second yellow like the, it, to not give a yellow for that is criminal and then furthermore, especially because it's like, I, I, like I'll like i say it again, I, I really think it could have gotten a red, but 
Whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, we got the, screwed. Which is very interesting is when he gets subbed off five minutes later for a certain player. Um, I think we'll note it. But uh, so we go into the halftime one zero down, and I think our expected goals was point zero zero nine going into halftime. Basically, just nice. a couple aimless shots that were blocked at the top of the box. Um, and there's absolutely no goal threats from Bishtaj. Halftime comes. Uh, Abubakar comes in for Atakan. For his second Bishkhtaj debut. Um, I was very happy to see my guy who I've wanted for several years now finally back on the field. Um, yeah, it's so sad that the episode you missed was the was the intro for him. Yeah, and then uh, five minutes later, the guy who didn't get sent off, Chikalishi, was like subbed off, you're assuming, because he went into a couple like challenges right away, and the coach was like, I right, just get them all type thing. <laughs> Yeah, like we've already, he already, he's already living on like borrowed time. Uh, so they subbed on Artem Kravitz, who I'm saying his name for some reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be relevant. Um, but uh, after that, there's a couple more yellow cards. And uh, 61st minute, Get Contera came in for Guven Yalchin. 63rd minute, um, exciting time, Artem Kravitz scores. 2-0. This was right when we started to get some, you know, dominance in the game. We actually created yeah. a chance or two. Abubakar was looking good. I was going to say, like, when they're up 1-0, it's like they kind of earned it. They deserve it. But then, from then on, we actually really take the game, and it's just a bunch of klutzy... Well, yeah, you're I mean, about to tell people. Tell them about it. <laughs> the second goal is, get kind of tries to, like, dribble two guys on the sidelines. And then Nedjib like doesn't drop back because he was like right next to him. And then they just like kind of casually pass through and then Kravitz is in space on the left wing like 35, 40 meters away from goal. And then Vita's like looking like he doesn't want to track back. So you can see him like visibly like looking and pointing. But there is no one on the right to really get him. So they all just kind of like jog casually back and then Kravitz literally just runs into the box. No one marks him. He just runs into the six yard box like at a tight angle. And then Erson comes out and he just lifts the ball into like the like where Erson's face was. And that now just right to the roof of the net and that was that was two zero and you're just kinda like, um, oh, okay. One kind of sort of funny <laughs> side note statistically, and I'm gonna call out our good friends, one of the Scottish twins, Cartel, was defending Nedjib's performance and saying um, as sort of defense to him that we had not allowed a goal down his wing. And it was like, I think maybe 10 minutes before we allowed that goal down his wing. It was like, oh, there yeah. he jinxed. I mean, um, it, this was not a vintage Nedja performance. Um, no, no, no. Yeah. For, and, yeah. And I think it's worth noting that he had dodged our criticism for a couple matches there, which is a credit to him, honestly. Like, he'd played yeah. In the well real-off game, he actually, which I did not talk on air, he was actually good compared to everyone else. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying he was relatively. great. I'm just saying compared to everyone else, he yeah, was definitely in a, more in a match that was terrible all around. But, yeah. Um, no, and like just generally speaking, he had kind of like held down fort. And I think I mentioned this uh, previously. One way that we have to look at all of these matches, uh, these first few matches, from Trabzon down to this one, is that we were playing them without a striker and a right back, with huge holes in the team and with uh, a bunch of new guys settling. And so this was going to be a period we were surviving rather than thriving, I always felt. And so to get that win against Trabzon was a shock. Um, and I thought like, wow, we could actually maybe build on this and turn this thing around. Well, obviously that's not quite what's gone on. Um, but with that Ooh. said, uh, I guess we do have to give credit to Nedjip for kind of at least getting us through that period uh, with I mean, it, it, it turned sour real fast in this match. But anyway, back back to the program. Um, yeah. <laughs> what uh, uh, what happened next? So then we make another substitution in the 68th minute. Kyle Laren comes on for Lajic, which in my opinion was a, a mistake. Um, just the way, not that Lajic was playing great, but just the link up for Abubakar. It, I don't think that really, that pairing works. But uh you know, just moving on, 78th minute, uh, we're passing around the back, you know. So wait, you Vita were just just... talking about Laren and, and Abubakar? Laren, yeah, Laren and Abubakar together. I know you disagree, but 
Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about, about that, that in the analysis. Maybe I mean maybe not though. We usually don't really talk about subs very much. I will just say that I thought <clears throat> that Laren's ability to sort of actually be present and weigh on a defense a little bit and make runs gave Abubakar and later on Gokhan Toure space to do more. And so it doesn't obviously have to be Laren. And, and if it's someone who it doesn't have a club foot <laughs> like Laren, yes. it would be like potentially fantastic maybe to see a striker paired with Abubakar at some point. But yeah, I just think spacing wise, tactically speaking, right? I, I saw benefits to playing a striker who's physically present and therefore that I think immediately negates Kuven Yelchin or Umut Nair, to be honest, um, as that option. But anyway, but yeah, carry on. Sorry. And then uh, the 78th minute, we're passing around the back down 2-0, and Vita just kind of turns like blindly and plays a pass back. But uh, Mr. Artem Kravitz is waiting, so now he's basically one on one with the keeper. Um, Ederson comes like all the way outside, like to the outside of the box to close him down, and then. Uh, he squares it to Shangelia, and outside the box, he has an open goal. That's 3-0. Uh, <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Right um, after that, Ozhan and Hostage came on for Dorukan and Boyd. Yeah. And, I, and like just to reiterate, like this is where I think that these goals are, are mostly against the run of play. You know, we're, we're holding the ball for the most part and just slipping up. And then just like it's these series, like almost of comic like tragic comedy right where it's just like one stupid thing is followed by something even stupider until they score <laughs> somehow um, yeah but so sorry anyway i think let's, then, let's just wrap yeah, this thing up huh? even more 84th minute or 80 i think it's 81st minute when the penalty was given away vita just kind of bundles over faruk mia in the box as he's about to shoot really uh, just capping off a terrible day for yeah him. so great game for vita um <laughs> And then Kravitz comfortably hit it into the bottom corner. So that's two goals and an assist for him after he came on the 50th minute, um, which is why I mentioned his name. And then finally, we get some sort of uh, levity in the 90th minute. Get Contera tries to dribble past like three players. Um, he gets past the first and then like the second and third like close on him. And then he gets like a bit of a lucky bounce off one of their foot. Uh, goes right into like the corner of the box onto his weaker right foot and he just rips it into the side netting right next to the post actually a great he was finish pissed. you could see he, yeah he, yeah I, i'm gonna have to say since again we're talking about a substitute uh gokan Tore is a guy who i i was critical of the move you know when people were really excited about him because i thought you know he's not going to be the kind of difference maker that people are you know seem to be fighting him as, as or whatever but uh, to be to be 100% honest, what I've been most impressed with is his increased maturity and kind of leadership. He's very vocal out there, um, telling people to, to get engaged, to, to make you know, to get more involved, to to wake up and stuff like that. You know, you, you need somebody like that, and it's, uh, especially in a team that seems particularly sluggish this year. Um, for some reason, I don't, I don't, I can't explain that, but uh, you know, he he seems to be lighting a fire under guys and really lighting into into them as well which i think we need yeah. sadly uh, but yeah so basically the game so and that's it or one gokan today the one redeemer if you could say that i guess um i guess stat flash stats. And yeah let's do stats position, yeah. let's yeah and let's do positions quickly yeah yeah so i'll yeah, do the stats. basic stats first uh we finished the game with 67.6 percent possession yeah, which again, like we're down by multiple goals. Um, on the shots, on the shot side, they had ten shots to our nine, but six of our nine shots were blocked. Um, so they had four shots on target and scored all four. We had two shots on target. I think one from Guven and one from Abubakar, which both could have gone in, but uh, neither of them did. And then uh, when I get advanced stats real quick, expected goals wise. Our expected goals was 0.68, and Konya's was 2.51, which means we had a 84% chance of losing based on that, um, which I think is a little bit misleading based on how like we gave away the goals, but um, yeah, it was definitely a, a collapse there from a game, again, that we had no business even losing, 
Um, and then we just got like walloped. So uh, yeah. also in terms of you know me saying that we're wasting the ball passing around the box, Wellington completed 100 passes. Um, that was the most on the team. Wow. Uh, and then okay. if Atakanuna, who played 45 minutes, uh, completed eight out of nine passes. So he was he was and, so conservative with his passing. I was. And then he didn't even get the ball though. Boyd only completed 11 passes out of like 14 or 15 the entire game. He played 80 minutes. Uh, yeah, basically, just yeah. passed around the back like clowns for most of it. Um, yeah, it was no good. And well, to me, Wellington's not the player I want completing 100 passes. No, no. Win. You'd much rather it be, uh, I mean, maybe not Doricon based on who he is, but the person in Doricon's position, right? You'd want someone in the center of the pitch to be. Yeah, I mean, Wellington, basically, I think of those 100 passes, I would say at least 80 of them were, were passive or negative if not yeah. 90 of them yeah um, it was just really just like his first touch always seems to be like just slightly off and then he just plays like, like he'll play like a 35 yard pass back to the keeper like one out of every three times i well, think all Arison, right let's do I this could tell let's... you how many passes arison did real quick yeah sure. just to really signal my point he completed 34 passes out of 41 oh, attempts God. which is more than dorukan did that's the same amount as pa same amount of passes as Adam Leitch. Wow. Um, <laughs> oh my God. You know, it's just really not what you want to see. Like, it's it's just your goalie sh for us should not be having more passes than our creative players. Um, to call that negative football is uh, it's like a little bit redundant, right? It's yeah. too obvious. So what? I mean, let's let's dig in here. Um, what the hell's going on, man? Like what? <laughs> Why are we playing so negatively? I mean, obviously, okay, you've got a bunch of guys adjusting to each other, kind of getting used to each other's runs and what, what they expect of each other and how to play alongside each other, all that. Fine, to an extent. But yeah. what, like, how do you explain the bungling in the back? I mean, and, and what's, we've been really critical of Wellington. He hardly had a good day, but to, yeah, I mean, we, we can also say this was, space, yeah. So. This that wasn't was a... his match. This wasn't the Wellington match to criticize. This is absolutely a Vita, and I, I, I will again tack on Nejip because I think it was that. There was like always a blunder in communication between yeah. those two, either positionally I or think, passing. Yeah, for me, Vita gave away at least three of the four goals. Yeah. Um, so defensively, it goes to him, but offensively, Wellington was just like, I, I know he's a center back, but you know, he gets <laughs> the ball so much. And it's just his, he screws up the rhythm every single time. Same thing with Nejib. The first touch is never right. He never opens his hips right. He never gets the ball in between the lines. Unless he's like in acres of space. What sort of sucks about it most of all is that he has almost like the right instincts. You know, you'll see him like make a move between guys. It's like, oh, okay, he's going to make a little run here. But then like the next thing he does is always the wrong thing. It was, it's like the rut that Tyler Boyd was getting stuck in for a, a while there before he seemed to have turned Maybe it around. Maybe we just spoiled by having uh, some guy named Victor Ruiz at center back for so long, who was like yeah. practically like a defensive mid on the ball, you know, yeah, who, you know, solid. could hit 60 yard balls casually, consistently. So you, dribble. let's talk a what? little bit about, uh, since you, you weren't here post Leo Ave, about Montero. And I, I will say that I was, Genuinely pleased with his performance against Leo Ave. He was certainly not responsible for any of the goals scored, I don't recall. <laughs> there was um, only one. Yeah. There was. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but uh, he didn't make any mistakes. I thought he was really good on the ball, showed a lot of poise, like uh, controlling the ball and moving. Around. Like, he, he, was, he took a couple risks, maybe, but I think in a way it was him showing what he's got, you know, since it was his first Yeah. Game. I mean, for me, Montero didn't swing me either way yes or no it was uh optimistic but not like I'm not gonna start hyping him i think you know you need to see him play like at least five games because just there were a couple moments where like uh, he was getting beat off the dribble there's a couple moments when he looked quite good um so i think it's it's a type of player where he hasn't really played at that level consistently uh, I think he had his first consistent season ever last year in the second division of Spain. So I just, you know, type of player. And also his partner was Wellington, who's not, you know, 
He's the nobody, opposite of all nobody's reliable. ideal partner for him. Um, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe maybe we're being a little harsh on Wellington. Like I feel like defensively he's solidified a bit. He just needs to like hasn't given away a penalty every game. <laughs> yeah, there there is that. Uh, although this week it was not him. Let's not forget it was our boy Vida. Um, yeah, no, Vida Vida was. I thought Vida what was gonna leave right after the game. Like that was gonna be the announcement based on the way. Yeah. He was his body language and everything. I thought he'd want like I thought he had made the decision to leave, honestly, right? Like that was uh, yeah. a shocking of all the guys to kind of let you down in the way he did, he wasn't the one I would have expected, to be honest, but uh, so it was. Um, let's jump into player by player, I guess, since we've kind of already done, done, done it center the backs, yeah. Um, and so as we do, let's start with the keeper though. Erson. Uh, I would say relatively blameless. I think I've said we've we've sort of debated, but I don't know if you necessarily disagreed. <clears throat> I think he could have done better on the second goal, although it's definitely not his fault. You know, and I've always said, and whenever you've let your keeper down and it's a one on one, you're you're already kind of making him yeah. blameless. I mean, you know? for me, it was when he ran forty yards without any pressure towards yeah, the edge of the sure. six yard box. With that was that was where. The goal happened. Um, it, it's one of those goals that you, maybe he should have saved, uh, but at the same time, it's not like it's not an error. It's just something he could have done better on, and he was just left alone. Yeah, um, exactly. So uh, he was abandoned. No, uh, yeah, and I, I just think he his dive had him sort of duck under the ball, so it was like a bit of you know, it, it, just from that angle, he probably could have done better standing tall. Or like yeah. kind of, you know, he, he didn't do and, the Fabry thing where he keeps his face up and get like yeah, nailed exactly. in the nose. Take a yeah. take a <laughs> take a headshot, man. Uh, no, but like really, again, like whenever you've left your keeper that out in the cold, you're already uh, which was basically the damage four, is done. All four goals, he was yeah just left in the cold. An uncontested header, which I guess maybe his positioning wasn't great because he was jogging back. Again, but literally no one contested it, and then a penalty. And, and actually, in his penalty. defense... And his, then a square pass, though. So. In his defense on the first one, too, his, the only reason he's perhaps somewhat distracted is because he's actually the only one awake to what's going on, and he's trying to yell and get people sort of initiated yeah, defensively. And also, out of all those six guys, I think everyone is 30 or older, and he's 19. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. So, yeah. you, you know, you would... I'm going to blame the, the, his yeah. lack of reaction, but he was probably the only person who stepped to the ball. Yeah. And then realized he couldn't get the cross. So, and then he stepped back, and the the header was perfect. So, I don't blame him for anything. Yeah. Second goal, maybe he could have saved us and kept us in the game. I will say that, but it clearly based on how our Vito was playing, it looked looked like he didn't want that. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, no, <laughs> it was yeah. A complete capitulation. So. I was gonna say it's not like the third and fourth goals were any different, right? It's not like I yeah. I don't know whatever. Um. We've already basically hit up Vita and and Wellington, you know yeah. Vita especially as as the kind of um, problem perhaps uh, main problem and and again Wellington didn't make the glaring defensive errors, but also didn't really play well obviously so I mean I, I think we're just we were so focused on the the errors being made on the other side of the defense that uh, he might just get away with something this week. I, I, I'm, I'm not in the mood to analyze a uh, slightly less important central defender in a match like that. Um, moving on, the the, the fullbacks. We had Nsakala and um, Nejip. We've already, I've hit up Nejip. Do you, did you disagree with my analysis of Nejip? No, Nejip was, uh, you know, again, not very great. Uh, going forward, I guess, especially this game, you know, I think he was hit that that cross against Rio. I've looked a little lucky when based on how he crossed um, this game. He just like <laughs> aimless, like not even remotely close to anything, any player on our team. I think he had one cross where he like hoofed it to the other sideline. Another cross where it was knee height. Another, like, it was just like bizarre. It was just like, all right, we'll just, just stop doing that, please. Um, yeah, yeah. And then so, defensively. <laughs> He wasn't. I would say he was nowhere to be seen, but you know, he he didn't really offer much in the build-up. He didn't offer anything. Key um, lapses positionally that contributed to yeah. major errors for us and goal scored. Yeah, I mean, bad game. He's definitely the backup. Um, <clears throat> definitely 
you know, based on who I think we're bringing in, uh, I hope he'll be immediately brought slid the to line. the bench. So I hope so. Um, moving on, in Sakala. Don't even remember what he did in the game. Um, I just <laughs> my my the main thing I remember is he had hair extensions. Yeah, yeah, he definitely <laughs> was it, doing something with his hair there. His my hair increased in length by a foot, but uh. My yeah. feelings on Insakala are that he initially I was like, well, at least Insakala is playing well because he was sort of strong in defense. But I think as it all fell apart, he eventually yeah. sort of succumbed to it and started making some sloppy passes. I mean, I guess to be fair, the advanced numbers gave him some props, saying that he uh, there you go. had the most progressive passing out of anyone on the team. Um, there you go, and then he also contributed the most to the expected goals um, on the team uh, but that. I think you know that I don't think he like he's he gets a pass from me man of the match um, that's man of the match material right no there. no no I'm just kidding I'm just... <laughs> he wasn't great defensively but I don't think any of the goals had anything to do with him if I remember correctly uh, most of them came down the right side maybe he could have tracked back on that I think he had one square. poor poor clearance where it skied yeah and drop to someone but oh, then everything yeah. that followed after that wasn't his fault and like we had like five or six opportunities to put that to get the ball out of there before they scored so it wasn't like he just contributed he okay. to the build up to the problem but he was okay uh, i'll just leave it at that not good he was okay yeah that's my feeling um he was garbage i'm not gonna blame him so but speaking of garbage um next up is <laughs> we're going to the center of the midfield and i really hate to report this but our guy Dorokan Tokus was was garbage. He was garbage. Yeah. I mean, it was just like to be fair, I would say that maybe he didn't get the ball enough to get into the rhythm, but it, it wasn't good, if we're gonna be honest. Um it's just a little sloppy, um, making the wrong decision. Like when he would go forward, like he would just dribble someone. I think it happened like twice where he, like he would do a really nice dribble. I think it was one he dinked it over a slide tackle. Yeah, like yeah, alongside the, around he, the defender. He went behind. Like, the it'd defender. be a moment of like really nice play, and then he just do something stupid. Well, and um, you know what that made me think is that he's clearly like his strength is in his ability to to sort of multitask, to go forward and come back with a passion yeah. event occasionally. So he can't be the the number six. He just can't. Right? I mean, that seems. We've weird. seen it work at times. We've seen it not work. Um, I'm not sure if he's the best option. I mean, I uh, guess you know, like if someone if, got their license today. Uh, yeah, right. Well, I was gonna Joseph say Souza, So when you've got a guy like Atiba who can play the eight now, apparently for some reason, right? And, well, um, Atiba is was out the last two games. I didn't even realize he was hurt, but I think Atiba is definitely our best six that we've seen this season. I yeah. will say that, but we haven't seen Joseph yet. And for me, based on the current players we have right now, probably Dorokan fits in that role. Well, so yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that Dorakon, so. I think, can only function in that uh, role he if can he has in, in the in the eight also. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, and I think he needs someone who can be more disciplined and stay back when he decides to do one of his things, where he just runs around like a maniac. Because it's fine to have a maniac occasionally, you know, but there has to be some balance there. And I think Mensa is already uh, an attacking-oriented player. Yeah. And so Mensa, by the game, way, I think Mensa's next. Mensa was the one who dropped back. If you, I'm not sure if you yeah, saw and that's that, but not a lot of times be, Mensa right? was the one. That's not that's not what we want. <laughs> yeah. That's not like Doricon, Like that's cute, but like stop. Can you please <laughs> can you please have Mensa up there who can actually dribble guys and like maybe create a chance here and there instead of your wild maniac <laughs> nonsense? Uh, but yeah. So anyway, Mensa. Again, I think he was played out of his position by. The, you know, by I think he was in position, but just based, he just kind of like took it upon himself to say, "All right, I'm taking the, I'm taking the ball out of the back." Yeah, um, be a sort of a deep lying playmaker. He was doing out. a little bit of both, but it, I mean, I don't think Mensa really did anything nope. crazy of note. Sort um, of like Insakla, I think uh, he he may have even had a decent sort of like statistical outing honestly because i don't think yeah his, his numbers were good man so but i don't in the final third especially before bubakar came on it was you know it, it wasn't like he was his old self no. that we were watching before Rio Av. it was um it was good but it wasn't you know he wasn't doing what we needed in my opinion 
Next yeah. up, this is going to be a one to talk about. Adem Ljajic. <laughs> not as yeah, not his best game. No, uh, no, no. Uh, and I'll say this is my feeling is that I was really like even upset with him for much of the game, and then like late in the first half, he finally got the ball and did a nice little run, and then made the right decision. He passed it off to someone yeah. when, when the defense was sort of mounting, and then in the second half, he came out. And scored, although it was then called offsides. Uh, yeah, as soon as Abubakar came in, that was like Abubakar's first. Touch. I think him and Abubakar showed a lot of potential in that in that duo. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, and then yeah, he came off maybe a little early. But I think yeah, he kind of like ghosted the first thirty minutes, and then it was kind of like, oh, now we're down. Let's give the ball to Lige type thing again. Yeah. Um, I'm not like I know. He's, he's the type of player to be a little bit, you know, wish-washy in his form. Um, yeah, yeah. So if this is as low as it gets, I'm not bothered. I think also the team around him needs to improve. He's not a Quaresma type player where you can just give him the ball and just randomly produce something or a Talishka, you know, just randomly shoot from 35 yards. I mean, he he, he even um, has done it, like, but not regularly enough where you can depend yeah. on it. I, th- I think, first of all, he needs he needs someone to combine with. I was going to say, he, like that... Gone, yeah, his, Ben is not the player for him to combine with. His best not. stretch with us was, like, the only stretch that Burak was with us and sort of consistently healthy for, like, yeah. 10 weeks in a row. And, and that's when we made that run at the end of the last season. Um, because the two of them got it together and 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 yeah it, it, by last i mean the one before the one that's finished <laughs> remember so two years ago geez uh this this, this season ended all weird so, or this last one um but so yeah you know i think he's always been a guy that needs a partner uh ahead of him to flourish even offensively like even taking shots i think he needs to present that the the paradox for a defender like is he going to lay this off in a clever way that and, and to someone who I'm afraid of scoring or is he going to do something yeah. himself right he, if if he if you know he's his only option is to do something himself it's probably a lot easier to defend him so yeah hopefully Abubakar will uh, change things around for him a bit I mean there were the, the two moments with Elijah and Abubakar was when Lyage was offside, but I don't think he expected the pass. And then the other time when Abubakar set him up perfectly, and he just shanked the shot right before he came off. Um, yeah. Which was, that was just like really his only shot, I think, that we've even seen this season. So, yep. Yep. We definitely need a number nine like Abubakar, and we have a number nine like Abubakar, so. <laughs> yeah, problem solved. Yeah, yeah we'll <laughs> see. And, and I hear already, um, it's obviously like, sort of nonsensical rumors for the most part, but already there's talk of Abubakar and Gokhan Ture entering the starting lineup uh, in, the, in the coming week against yeah. Genschler. So. Shift to the wings, right? The... Say again? Next position. So we can shift to the wings. To talk yeah, about. let's do that cool. quick. So we have uh, Tyler Boyd and uh, Atakan. Atakan. Then we had Gekhan Ture come off the bench. So I guess we throw him in there yeah um, and, and i feel like we've already basically talked about both of these guys sort of at, they were on islands yeah. in my opinion i agree um, i agree and partially by their own making right like not making runs perhaps I, I honestly i don't i don't think so it was i don't really think it was either their fault at all um i thought Atakan actually made good runs i think boyd maybe less so but boyd has and Sakala on his side instead of nejib um and Atakans is not that is not the type of player when the team sucks. It's just not. Um, Tere is much more suited for that, you know, to get the ball with three defenders on him. Creating. Atakans yeah, not that himself. player. Yeah, he's just not. He's 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 a good player. He's a good finisher. Um, but the team has to be with him. You know, he's, he's sort he's of like an old just, guy, I suppose, right? Yeah. So he's he's not going to carry the team on his back. Uh, he, not gonna say he's useless. And he's super but in these, young. In so, these situations, okay. when the team sucks, there's just no point of having him out there. I think he's a great player for rotation, and then you know maybe as a sub, we need a little bit more of an incisive edge off the bench. But when the team's playing like this, get Contreras as the winger that we that we need. Well, yeah, and I think we're in a stage where we need to be establishing our starting rotation and getting guys like match ready you know uh and, and playing yeah. together as a unit so i don't really think it's time to experiment to that extent i think 
rotation's great, and I think uh, Atakan, I hope, will get lots of games, you know, later on after things are more established and we can play around against, like, uh, you know, sm smaller teams or in, in a domestic cup. And, you know, I mean, th there will be a lot of opportunities. Again, we're going to have multiple matches a week, a few weeks in a row because uh, of the 40-game schedule. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's fine. Rotation's great, but let's not get too crazy this at this stage of the season, I think, right? Um, let's just move on. Let's talk about our striker situation. And so Guven Yelchin came out. We already kind of hit him up with some criticism. We don't have to overdo it. He was okay. Um, I think he played better with a Wuvukar. And he went to like the wing striker role. Uh, he almost kind of actually scored a little bit of a sneaky shot, cross, whatever that was. Um, but when he when he's the nine, it's, it's just, it doesn't really work. Um, especially when the teams are like against Rio Av, they were just like giving the ball away with their center backs, I think. And then... Re event would get it like in the third like with just one player on him um but in this game when it was more you know 11 men behind the ball he, he's not gonna break open the, the defense he's just not and he can't um, do anything Abubakar is clearly that player that is the one to break down the defense uh, given needs someone to needs a focal point so i mean and i hate i hey. hate to say it but he's so useless you know when he's when he's not able to kind of like just run around like a, you know in, in almost garbage time basically that i still have him underneath laren in the in the pecking order even though laren is also quite useless i mean currently. based on the last two games guven has uh has been better than laren real oven to and uh Konya, i think yeah, i mean but think guven about better think about but. like i the match against Rio Av for guven for me is a lot like Laren's match against Antalya and that they both got sort of gifted goals by Nedjip somehow. Yeah, but he also had two really good um contributions. And yeah, that little back heel flick. Yeah. I think I don't yeah, you, messed it up as it was You you get more turned around game, by like the moments of No, the flash. one that we, like, we remember we like right before the, the the first half we should have made it 2-0. I don't remember he played um someone in like through on goal. You don't remember that? Well, yeah, he put him on the wing and then the, the that's where it fell apart, I think. But yeah, I mean, I'm not. No, we I'm we, not had, a, we like, had a clear 100% goal scoring chance created by him because the center back lost the ball in Rio Av. That was like right after he scored, right before halftime, where we had those flurry of easy chances. Um, he had a part to play in at least two or three of those. But then, other than that, he did nothing. I don't recall that. I do remember the back flick, but I think that just led to a run down the wing that we muffed on a cross. I mean, Ultimately, like you know, that sort of bit of flash is nice, but I'm I'm way more interested in him being a sort of consistently useful and productive player for us, you know. And and he hasn't. He's still he, he's done nothing to show his ability to do that. And worse, it's like another year older, and he's still sort of diminutive and and unimpactful physically, and in, in, in his ability to like alter how a defense approaches us you know what i mean i he he doesn't uh he doesn't impact the the flow of the offense in any way and that's that's really he, troubling he, to me he's fine in certain situations but when the other team is playing defensively uh he's useless and i think when the other team is better than us he's also not worth having on so, but listen to what yeah, you I just said right so when a team is better than us and when they're being defensive so that means they're not as good as yeah. us <laughs> so well, when like, a team is better it, than us and when a team's not as good as us he's useless for me he's he's okay in those games that if there's if he's like when he's not then the sole number nine if he comes on as like the second striker yeah 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 yeah. That's and true. someone else is making space for him and then he exactly. can exploit it yeah, exactly. or if it's a sort of game where there is some space teams you know they're not like most teams if we're gonna be honest are not like Konya they're not gonna park the bus um, and then just literally just sit back and wait um that's not like we'll see I mean it, as it could, common we, in, in the Turkish league we could see that but, yeah but well I guess it's gonna depend on how these guys yeah, most it. teams are a little bit more adventurous than than Konya but literally it works for them so yeah I don't know I, with this 40 team league I feel like there's like six or seven teams now that are like you know, probably not that good. But I, on the other hand, I guess Fatih Karagunruk and, and uh, Hatay are, are cleaning up right now. So perhaps that's not. Anyway, um, yeah, let's actually wind up 
all of that. So we've, we've, we've hit up all the positions now by talking about the standings really quickly. Finally, we, we, we can finally do a standing session uh, since we have three matches in our, under our belt and things are starting to shape up. No, they're not really, but, you know, just for fun, just to see how things have turned out. Because we just mentioned that Fatih Karagumaruk is on top of the league now. Um, <laughs> And they also undefeated. Uh, made another big, big money loan signing. So yeah, Bilia, and and there's talk of maybe them getting Balotelli next. Yeah, and they they signed Badu and Di on loan also. Oh so wow, guaranteed, and I don't know they got some money apparently. So. I don't know how this is happening, but <clears throat> it's very interesting nonetheless. And um, one thing of note is that they've drawn, so you know nobody has won all three matches, which is, I think, a testament to how wild the Turkish Super League is. But so on top is Fatih Karagümrük, then you have Alanya in second, Galatasaray in third, Antalya in fourth, Hatay in fifth, and all of those teams have so seven points. all the points. seven points, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Erzurum, Büyükşehir, Belediye Erzurum, to be specific, uh, is, is in sixth with six points. Guztepe and Fener each have five, and then... In the group of four pointers is Konya Sport, Trabzon, Besiktas, and Sivas. And so we are officially yeah, down in, 11th. in 11th place. But, you know, again, three matches in. No panic here, right? We, we still Three points off first place. And 37 and matches to go. <laughs> so, like, calm down. Uh, and so, yeah, this, this is now where we get to have some fun. Um, Maybe before we have fun, let's do the bad news first. Uh, I don't know if it's really bad news, but just, you know, the bad news for someone. There are a bunch of guys who are in part as a response to this match and in part the stuff that had preceded this match who are gone. Uh, Evron, who, who's out? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, it looks like Lenz uh, and Umut Nair are on the uh, chopping block because they're both out of the squad. Um, not even on the bench. Yeah, and and with um, it, following up on that, the the real news, sort of definitively about Douglas and Isimat, is now that we're just going to outright cut them. Um, I don't know if that's yeah. They, they've been out of the picture for a while. We there we have too many foreigners, and uh, we're looking to sign more foreigners. Um, so we have you know two foreigners who haven't played at all, and then two, and then one more with Lenz who looks to be out of the squad, so. Yeah, and they were already like Kadro Dishi or whatever that, you know, but, yeah. but now it's, uh, we've reached a whole nother level. I think we're gonna actually cut them. And what that means by it, it being reported that we're cutting them, I think that suggests that we're probably gonna try to get a little money for Lenz and Umut. Um, Umut probably has some interest among lower caliber sides in Turkey. German Lenz, I have no idea. I, I know that, he, he has interest, but just his salary will be the, yeah. The, that's the going to be a huge hurdle. Um, alongside that news is that supposedly we are going to be in a real rush to then dump Vida after that performance, um, but somehow that has uh, not happened. What's the news there, everyone? Yep, Vida apparently wants to stay. That's what the the latest Ace Poor reporting was. Um, you know, he's got that massive salary. That's like three times more than the new transfers we're bringing in. Um, and he said he wants to stay. Uh, there is interest, but apparently he just he doesn't want to go. So yeah, and he whether or not the club will force him out, if they'll just keep playing him, it's not clear because he's not taking a pay cut. So. Yeah, and supposedly Ahmed Nurcebi... And we have no European football, so... Uh, Ahmed Nurcebi, um supposedly wants like to step in and, and force him out somehow. I don't know if that's going to be plausible. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't really care either way at this point. I feel like we're in a rebuild. I don't mind replacing him just given his salary and how large it is. Uh, I don't mind him as a player. At the same time, I'm not like a Team Vita guy. I, I think he's shown the capacity to make a lot of mistakes over the years with us at the same time he's also been our better def the, probably our best defender over the last few years you know, you know over, all in all so either way i'm fine with it I, I i want to see montero getting time and playing I, I i don't mind replacing vita if you know if that's the move with that suomaro guy or maya yoshida or whoever it might be you know but um i don't want that if Vita's out, 
it better not mean that we're getting a Wellington slash Montero pairing in the back for the rest of the year. Because uh, Montero, I'm okay with, but uh, banking on on Wellington is something I'm not in a position to do right now, at all. Um, you have any final thoughts on that? Am I, am I out of line? Yeah, I mean, clearly players have to go. Income is it's going to be even further down. We didn't even qualify for the Europa League. You know, biggest choke I think of. You know, just, just the as the reason I was so sad. It's just like you know, the lack of effort from the players, which we saw again versus Konya, which is just you know, whatever. And now we were already in financial trouble. The economy is going down even more. I think what the lira is like ten liras to every one British pound or something. Hit that. Yeah, hit a weird threshold. You know, landmark. Week, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So and then it's just you know we can't afford these guys. We couldn't afford them before, in my opinion. They should have just gone. Um, but we kept them. Got knocked out. Champions League got knocked out. Europa League. Clearly, there's not enough money. Um, and we keep signing more players. So there's definitely not enough money. Yeah. Someone's got to go. So. I one thing I'm gonna say uh, in defense of everything quickly before I then. Uh, stop doing that <laughs> is you know i think we've had this track record of over like buying too many guys stockpiling them and then we lose all negotiating power when we're trying to sell guys that we need to to, to get under the limit because it's like yeah i know you say you want five million or whatever you might be asking for for this player but i also know that you if you can't sell this guy you're gonna have to cut him in two weeks right because you you, you, <laughs> yes. you just literally can't have more than x amount of foreign players so we are in so inept in this regard in, in basically removing any negotiating leverage we have by hanging on to guys too long, um, you know, playing these games like, oh, maybe Laren's going to work out. I mean, uh, to be honest, we were all about it. We were all on the family man hype trying ourselves. But like now we're in a position <laughs> where that might not be that like, he might have to go. But so I don't mind, actually, if we have to wait to sell Kyle Laren before Placing him, and even if that means we're stuck yeah. with Kyle Lanner as our backup, there is some news on that front, by the way. And, but um, just to tie that up, even if it means we end up yeah. tied into to, to Kyle Lanner as our backup, like that's the price you pay for poor for errors. The, the price you pay is not to recruit zero resale value and like just sort of sacrifice or forfeit the whole thing. Like that's that's not how you know what I mean. Like so. It sucks, but like that's financial responsibility to some extent. So, uh, uh, with that said, though, obviously, ideally, you find someone to sell him to, and then you get that replacement. So that's where you step in, everyone. What what do you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, on the striker front, there is interest for Laren, according to Serge John Dickman from the Dutch league and the Belgian league. He played in Belgium last year, um, but there's no official offers. Uh, so, I mean, I guess this just kind of looks like they might ship him around now at this point. Yeah. Um, and obviously he would go for some sort of fee, unlike the rest of the guys on the chopping block. So yeah, for sure. Um, you know, is is he's had like one bad week, so it's not like his value's gone. He's still young, ish. So, yeah, I would I would assume so. And he he carries a certain like, you know, as a Canadian, there's like an amount of interests. You know, I think getting a Canadian player gives you a following, maybe. I don't know if that's even true, honestly. It's not quite the same market as the, uh, yeah, Alfonso the U.S. market is more valued. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, I mean, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. Like, if he goes fine, I, I, I do think we might need to replace him in the end. But, you know, whatever. It, like, I'm just really glad that we have Abubakar and he immediately showed that he's going to be of immense value to us if he stays healthy. Yeah, um, he was he was great in my opinion. He's but, the uh, he's the man of the match because uh, everybody else was yeah. absolute garbage, and uh, he <laughs> him and Toto were probably the best players. But Abubakar for me was the best. I mean, he showed such every touch was on target. If, if, like all of our our shots yeah. on target were probably by him. So you know whatever. Yeah, he scored a nice goal. Also, we didn't mention, but it was offside. Yeah, him and um, the IH both had nice goals, and he created the yeah. IH goal. Um, yeah. But so moving along, so we've covered uh, all the, the guys leaving, which is bad news for mostly them, honestly, but whatever. Uh, let's get on to some good news. And so before we even talk about the strikers that we might try replacing Laren with, first, 
There's a certain player on our team who joined us from Al Ahli uh, who has not been able to feature at all for us yet. Uh, and there's maybe a light at the end of the tunnel there, I think. Yeah, so he finally got his license. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier, but Yosef had like that dis- dispute with his old club as he unilaterally, unilaterally <laughs> terminated his contract because he wasn't getting paid. Um, I think they were disputing it, but um, he finally got his license from the TFF today. So nice. It means he can play in the next league game, um, especially if Atiba's not back. I would like to have an actual six there. So. Yeah, for sure. And what's the deal with Atiba? Is he, how long is he out? Do we know? I don't. I don't even know. I don't even remember him getting injured. So I think it's um, like week to week, maybe. Huh? Yeah, he's not like listed as injured anywhere, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, hmm. Interesting. But yeah. Um, well. And then uh, we also have a right back to talk about. Well, so yeah, let's do striker stuff first. Let's let's like speculate oh, okay. more. Let's do the speculative. <laughs> Really, there's, this is not known yet. Uh, it seems likely we're going to s- look for a striker. And again, I think it's very dependent on selling Laren. Um, but who are we looking at? Still, <laughs> for some reason, Kalinic. The latest report was that we offered him $3 million per year. Which, I mean, I really just hope is just someone's pulling our chain by reporting this. Um, it's not like this is like fanatic or something stupid, like, you know, it's actual reports saying we're still going after him, still, uh, you know, I just, just even thinking about it makes me sick. Ditto. 32 year old, 3 million a year for the next two years. Um, and someone who's this, really this economy. not proven to be prolific at any stage of his career beyond yeah, his ever. home country. It's not like, it, it's not like he's ever scored more than 20 goals in the league season, so I don't understand. Um. <laughs> you know the reason to go for it in such a matter manner but here we are you know i guess here we are so, <laughs> um. yeah back at it again with the white shoes all right no so um <laughs> what else is there though so if that doesn't pan out is it still cise koita are there any other potential yeah. candidates out there? it's it's very quiet to be honest college was the last one that's been like Heavily reported. There's been like you know whispers. I, uh, Ahmed Kutuju got a, a whisper. Um, Did Fener end up which, end up with Zay Luis in the end? Like they were they poached. No, him. they signed Samata. That's right. They signed Samata. Huh. Yeah. So that was just and a no, troll no, job. Yeah, but uh, Kalinic honestly is like there was. There's been no real news in the last three days. Uh, I don't think we'll have another striker for next game. If I'm being honest. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I, I just, I just want my man. We don't even know what's going on. Uh, but so here we do, and finally, what we're gonna, we're gonna get to wrap this whole thing up on is, is some, some actual good news. The right back quandary has been solved. What's the deal there, man? Yeah. So this is a lot of reports. Sarajan Dikman, Ortachinski, and Begin Sports Turkey all report that we have loaned Valentin Rosier, who I think we haven't talked about for a couple weeks, no. from Sporting Lisbon. Um, for I believe it's going to be 1 million euros is what we'll have to pay for the year to have him. Is there an option to buy? Um, Probably, right? Not, not that I've, not that I've seen. Um, it's possible, um, but obviously the official report hasn't come out. That's just like the first, um, you know, the first breaking news was earlier today. Well, yeah, because I think so what's happened we'll is we've agreed more. with him, right? So we still have to agree with the club on. Keep no, it's, it's a loan, so it's, it's agreed with the club. That's what they're reporting. Oh, interesting. I mean, uh, and they obviously loaned us Diaby last year. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've begun to establish a real relationship with them. Uh, yeah, and so, like, he played 50-plus matches with Dijon in League One over three years, or two, two between two and three yeah. years. Um, and then came to Sporting in 2019 and has only logged six matches. What's the deal? Do you have any idea? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not. I don't, have not seen any of his highlights in the Portuguese league. Um, I'm guessing it didn't go so well. Um, to be fair, you know, it's, it's not an unheard of place. You know, to the level he 
he uh, failed at, I guess you can say. Um, they also have multiple players on the roster in the same position um, that are, you know, internationals and all of that. Um, so it just didn't work for him, I guess. Um, there, I get, I, I can see why it didn't work. He's not a very good crosser of the ball. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for that type of player, that's definitely not him. Um, but I can't really tell you for sure what went wrong because I, I do not know. But I have seen him play in France before. So, uh, I can give you my, yeah, my quick mini scouting report. Let's hear it. Um, yeah, it was obvious I don't know everything. I only saw like 10, 12 minutes of his footage. Uh, very, very good feet. Very good dribbler. Very good, neat passer. Technical player, which is, you know, going to be just very nice to see after watching Nedja bundle around with the ball for <laughs> however long Whatever it's been. it is. That's eternity. Eternity. Eternity of a preseason. Um, he's also, he's not like super fast. He's not in Sakala. He's definitely, he's probably a little bit slower than Ridvan, but he's tall. Okay. Um, good athlete, pretty strong. Uh, and then he can play left back also. I, he's, he's definitely a right footed player. He's not like Adriano at all. He's not two footed, but the, you know, in France, they put him out on the left, the left side of defense as well. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think he's a lock on for the starting spot if he comes. I don't understand why not. Do. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't seem like a wildly indisciplined player. Good with the ball at his feet. We can actually, you know, build out of the back on his side. Hey, <laughs> hey that's something. Uh, he can actually defend. Um, and he doesn't like to. He's not like a just cross and hope. As an attacking fullback, he's he likes you know take players on, link up, play one twos. Nice, okay. Um, With Gokan yeah, Tore on so. the right side, that could be nice. Yeah, I think that could be an interesting combination. Uh, so yeah, he's going to be very different to what we've ever had. Uh, he's not like Adriano at all. Um, who was the other like you would say very technical fullback we mm -hmm. had? He's not like John Air at all, but he's not a cross and hope and not defend guy. Nice. And um. He's far more technical than Sokolov. It's could be a good pairing there too. It's going to be a very clear difference. That so. could be a nice pairing too. Then yeah, to have sort of that difference. But just the, the one issue is his crossing is okay. Um, doesn't get a lot of assists. We'll, we'll keep it on the ground with him. That's fine. Yep. Uh, well, all right. That's that's all good. And I think again, you know, he's 24. So if we have an option to buy and he works out, I mean, obviously the one sort of funny parallel. Is that the last flyer we took on a on a fullback was a Portuguese dude uh, who was making his way in France, and now we've got a Frenchman who was making his way in Portugal. So, but hopefully that's where the parallels end. I mean, and again to defend Rubocho, I think he uh, didn't really play poorly. He just didn't play well enough for us to spend the whatever three or four million it was to close out the deal. And if we kept playing him. And to be fair, if we had kept playing him, maybe he would have settled in and, and been a better player. But we didn't because it would have locked us into buying him out. Uh, so yeah, I see Rosier working out better. If I would have to give my my take based on my you know not full and I don't have enough evidence to make a really really defined take, but I think just the the style he is, you know, bigger, more physical, a little bit more confident at his feet. I think he'll do better. Uh, Rebojo was more of like a set piece taker in Port in France, excuse me. Um, we don't need that, uh, and he he was, he was small. <laughs> yeah, he was very small, um, which I think Ridvan is also, but Rebojo wasn't as good defensively either. So yeah, whatever. He's still our backup for now. Anyway, so. can't be worse than that. So yeah, James, exactly. But, you know. Oh yeah, don't even. Do uh, but so look, yeah. The good news is we have a guy now. And so uh, that's solved. And then these guys can sort of focus on whatever other holes they feel like they need to patch up. I'm assuming we're going to have too many foreigners because we're signing another foreigner. So well, with Lens, we'll see one or two departures. With Lens so. gone, actually, that solves it right then and there. Yeah. Um, although, if that's the decision. We'll just have three foreigners chilling in the reserves. Well, but. yeah, and that's the funny thing about having this 14 foreigner thing, I guess, is that that would always be the case. But um, that's fine. I don't fine i don't mind it uh obviously 
the the contract issue but like lens's contract is the second worst oh there's also one more thing on the right back um uh, merit Maz oh yeah that's out is officially signed for antalya sport yeah um so now they have two very uh, accomplished young turkish right backs they, they, they sold nazim as we mentioned they've had an academy player there mm -hmm. He's been playing very well, and now they signed another youth Turkish international. So, you know, to go along with Gekt and his Bayraktar. And, uh, you know, apparently you could afford any of them. So, let's let's see what happens. So, here we are. Yeah. Um, quickly, I'm looking for Valentin Rosier's social media accounts. I'm not. His uh, Twitter is relatively inactive. And sort of a fashion shoot on his Instagram page with nothing sportive. Six days ago, he posted a sort of fashion shot, but yeah, no Instagram stories, nothing nothing there. So I don't know what we're getting in this guy, but hopefully it works out. Um, <laughs> yeah, he hasn't posted a single thing of him like playing <laughs> soccer or football since June. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't. I'm we'll not going to say yeah. anything good or bad. I know. I, I know no nothing idea. about his personality or his whatever. Yeah. So. All I know is that we need a right back, and uh, the price is right, and he's young. So if it works out, it could really work out well. Um, him and Montero. That's a young back line we're developing theoretically once again. Although I feel like we've been here before. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's take this sucker out. Everyone's got to eat. Um, etc. etc. So, follow us. Oh, wait, one last bit of fun news actually. We have raised enough funds for our friend Mohammed Aminu in Ghana, in Accra, uh, that we are we've bought the first round of shirts uh, for his under 17 side. Uh, they're on their way to Ghana now. We're gonna get some pictures up on the GoFundMe. And then we're going to get back up with the raffle for the Atiba Hutchinson match worn kit. For those of you who have already donated for that, don't worry. Your money has not been squandered. It's, you know, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep raising money and get the rest of these shirts for these guys. And with the double sided added effect of us giving money to Besiktas, because we're going straight through the cartel of us. Uh, so it's like we're, we're two birds with one stone, two canaries. Uh, Eagles, we're keeping safe uh, with one stone in that we're doing our hashtag Birak Mom Senate. We are giving money to the club and we're getting shirts onto these kids in Africa uh, who will someday be star players for Besiktas, perhaps. But anyway, so uh, as always, uh, I'll, I'll put the link in the description for the episode uh, and you can find it on online in various places. Donate and if you're doing great things and you'll see it firsthand with some images soon. Hopefully, if the package gets there. Um, besides that, follow us on Twitter at Eagles underscore podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Black Eagles podcast. No spaces, one word, straight through. Follow the mothership at Besiktas underscore INT for all the latest news. Maybe there will be more news about a striker. Maybe we're going to get a backup goalkeeper now. What What else might we get, everyone? Maybe another winger? Who knows? Uh, probably maybe a center back if someone Yeah, wins. right. I was going to say, or maybe we'll get absolutely nothing and we should just shut up and deal with what we have. Um, whatever the case may be, stay tuned. Follow them for all the latest. Um, follow myself at sir underscore rights underscore a lot. I'm a ball of fun. What can I say? Uh, Evron. Are you still on your, your hiatus? I'm on my, yeah, I'm on my, my hiatus. You can't follow this guy, but he'll be back someday. We'll, we'll give you something to work with. Um, until then, however, and I, specifically until Sunday, and again, we have a 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time start, which is I, just so annoying. Like, I, I'm trying to eat breakfast at 9 a.m. I'm not trying to focus on <laughs> getting like the, the, the streams working. But anyway, so, so, so be it. 9 a.m., Sunday, Besiktas Gensler home match at Vodafone Park. Be there, be square. All I really have to say, but it is very important. Go I'm done.
Besiktas International hopes you enjoyed this program.